Dielectrics. Now we're going to investigate the effect of inserting a non-conducting material such as rubber or glass in between the two plates of a capacitor. So if we take a charged capacitor that's charged to Q0, there's an electric field E0 in between the plates and this has a potential difference delta V0 between the plates and capacitance is C0. We insert in between the plates a dielectric material, a non-conducting material such as rubber or glass. And now the uh, space in between the two metal plates is filled with this material. And what we would see at the microscopic level is that because there's an electric field pointing from uh, right to left here, the molecules at the microscopic level would get polarized so that the electrons would spend more time closer to the uh, plate that has positive charge, uh, leaving behind positive charge that is closer to the negatively charged plate uh, of this capacitor. So electrons orbiting around the nucleus spend more time closer to the positively charged plate simply because they will feel the Coulomb force, Coulomb attraction towards that plate. Uh, and we will see uh, an induced electric field uh, inside the material that will point from left to right. Now you can see that the outside electric field was from right to left. Now we have an induced electric field from left to right. So what is the overall effect of inserting this uh, dielectric material? Well, we have... Uh, the electric field pointing from uh, left to right, the total electric field being reduced due to this induced electric field inside. And uh, this results from having a surface charge distribution on one side, which is closer to the negatively charged plate, positively charged uh, side, and negatively charged side would be closer to the positively charged plate. And the distance between the two plates is what I call D. And the new potential difference that develops is delta V. The total electric uh, field uh, between the plates is reduced by uh, the induced electric field. And uh, the Potential difference delta V between the plates will be equal to the total electric field times the distance between the plates uh, in absolute value. So we can see that the delta V will be reduced because the electric field is reduced. So um, what is the new potential difference between the two plates? Delta V is equal to the original potential difference before I inserted a dielectric delta V0 divided by some factor kappa. So we, we see that we have a reduction in the potential difference between the two plates as a result of inserting this dielectric because of the uh, surface charges, uh, the net surface charges that develop closer to the negatively charged side a positive surface charges and negative surface charges developed closer to the positively charged side and we have a reduction in the potential because the electric field is reduced due to this induced electric field and potential difference is equal to electric field multiplied by distance between the two plates. So this factor, reduction factor, kappa, is called the dielectric constant. There is an alternative way of looking at this. We can say that the permittivity of free space is replaced by the permittivity of this uh, material, which is epsilon r times epsilon zero, where epsilon r is called the relative permittivity. So this relative permittivity is actually equal to the dielectric constant kappa. So what happens to the uh, capacitance C0? C0 was equal to Q0 divided by delta V0. Now we have uh, the potential difference between the two plates becoming delta V0 over kappa. So we see that the charge uh, stored in the plates Q0 divided by 
delta V0 over uh, kappa, the new potential between the two plates, delta V0 over kappa. So we will see that the capacitance will be modified. The new capacitance is kappa dielectric constant multiplied by the capacitance without the dielectric material. So we see that the capacitance will increase. At the same time, the, the total electric field was reduced due to this uh, induced electric field. Now, uh, the electric field in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor, remember, is equal to sigma over epsilon zero inside. Outside, it is zero. The contributions from the two plates would cancel. So, uh, the total electric field is sigma, the uh, charge density divided by surface charge density divided by kappa epsilon zero and this is equal to the surface charge density sigma divided by epsilon zero original electric field minus the electric field due to the induced charges so induced surface charge density divided by epsilon zero now you can see that I can view these two as uh, parallel plates and the electric field induced electric field in between these two plates is also sigma divided by epsilon zero but that sigma is the induced surface charge density sigma induced so uh, this tells me that the induced surface charge density sigma induced is equal to uh, kappa minus 1 kappa minus 1 divided by kappa multiplied by sigma the surface charge density on the capacitor plates all right so as a result, uh, I have found that the potential between the two plates is reduced. The permittivity is effectively increased by a factor relative permittivity, which is equal to the kappa dielectric constant. The capacitance is increased by a factor kappa. And this is all because there is an induced surface charge density, which is kappa minus one over kappa multiplied with uh, sigma, the charge density um, at these plates. So this surface charge density is a uh, sigma. Okay, so if I look at a parallel plate capacitor which has a original capacitance epsilon zero A over D, what I see is that the new capacitance as a result of inserting the dielectric material is a um, kappa epsilon zero kappa epsilon zero a over d which is kappa times epsilon zero is the permittivity or epsilon r times epsilon zero is the permittivity which is epsilon a over d so this is going to be my new parallel plate capacitance so epsilon permittivity is kappa times epsilon zero or relative permittivity times permittivity of free space now uh, there is a maximum voltage that can be applied to a capacitor before electrical discharge or dielectric breakdown occurs this is something we've talked about before. If you uh, apply this maximum voltage, you will see that there will be charge hopping between the plates of the capacitor and we will have a discharge process. So the, the maximum electric field the capacitor can handle uh, before the, the electric breakdown occurs is called the dielectric strength. And it's of the order of 10 to 6 volts per meter and the uh, uh, dielectric constant kappa is typically of the order of 1 to 10. 
So for air, kappa is equal to 1, we have uh, epsilon is equal to epsilon 0, which is permittivity of free space, and the dielectric strength is 3 times 10 to 6 volts per meter. So that's the maximum electric field the capacitor can withstand before the dielectric breakdown occurs or uh, the discharge, electrical discharge, starts. So we can summarize what we have learned from this uh, process, inserting a dielectric, our capacitance uh, increases to kappa times the original capacitance. So inserting a dielectric increases the capacity to store charge by a factor kappa, dielectric constant or uh, relative uh, permittivity. Dielectric strength increases, so we have higher maximum operating uh, voltage uh, that the capacitor can withstand. Uh, the possible, uh, there's a possible mechanical support uh, between the two capacitor plates. So I'm inserting a solid material here. So these uh, plates will have a mechanical support that separates them. Uh, this allows decreasing the distance between the plates uh, further. So this distance D between the plates can be decreased. And the capacitance, which is equal to epsilon A over D, by decreasing D can be increased as well. So as long as uh, we have uh, not exceeded the dielectric strength, the, the maximum electric field that we can operate with, uh, the capacitance will increase uh, using the mechanical support property of this dielectric. And if we consider uh, typical capacitors here, uh, we have a metal foil plus a dielectric rolled into a cylinder. Uh, this technology gives us a capacitance of the order of microfarads. If you use ceramic materials as the dielectric uh, material, we can reach picofarads to microfarads range. Uh, we can use a metallic foil plus an electrolyte solution, which is called an electrolytic capacitor. This gives us unipolar behavior. That means we can only charge it in one direction, but not the other. Uh, microfarads to millifarads range. And there are also capacitors whose capacitance can be varied. For example, by changing the distance between the uh, plates. These are called variable capacitors or varactors and that are used in radio tuning. So uh, this tunes the resonance frequency of uh, some oscillator. Okay, so in summary, we talked about the effect of inserting a dielectric material and non-conducting material such as rubber or glass in between the plates of a capacitor. What we see is that this uh, material that's inserted in between the two plates, which are charged to plus Q0 and minus Q0, will cause polarization inside the material, giving us uh, a net positive uh, surface charge density on one side and negative surface charge density on the other side, uh, which results in an induced electric field. The induced electric field opposes the original electric field, giving us a total electric field, E, which is reduced. And this reduction in electric field implies that the potential difference between the plates is reduced uh, to delta V0 over kappa, and the reduction factor is called the dielectric constant. The alternative view is to replace the permittivity of free space with the permittivity, which is relative permittivity times permittivity of free space. Relative permittivity is the dielectric constant. We can see that the capacitance, which is charge stored per potential difference, is increased by a factor kappa, and the induced surface charge density can be calculated by considering the total electric field being the original electric field minus the induced electric field. And using Gauss law, we have shown that the electric field in between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor was sigma over epsilon zero. So that's the original electric field. Now the induced electric field, which opposes the original electric field, is minus sigma induced over epsilon zero. And this gives us the total electric field, which is sigma over the new epsilon, which is kappa times epsilon zero. So we can find the induced surface charge density uh, as uh, basically a kappa minus one over kappa times uh, sigma. So how do we obtain this relationship? In sigma parentheses, we have 1 over epsilon 0 
minus 1 over kappa epsilon 0 equals to sigma induced over epsilon 0. And if I multiply it by epsilon 0, I will obtain uh, sigma minus sigma over kappa. So uh, that's basically going to give me kappa minus 1 over kappa. So 1 minus 1 over kappa times sigma. That's the induced surface charge density. In the case of a parallel plate capacitor, uh, the new capacitance is kappa epsilon 0 A over D, which is epsilon A over D. Uh, but we have a word of caution here. The, the charge that we can store increases linearly with potential difference where the proportionality constant is capacitance, but there is a maximum voltage that can be applied before electrical discharge or dielectric breakdown occurs. And we call dielectric strength as the maximum electric field the dielectric can withstand. And this is in the range of 10 to 6 volts per meter with kappa in the range 1 to 10. And usually we see that dielectric strength increases uh, as we insert a dielectric material, there's a higher maximum operating voltage. The capacitance increases by a factor kappa, and also we have an increase in mechanical support between the two plates by inserting the solid dielectric material in between, which allows decreasing D, the distance between the plates, a further increase in the capacitance is possible. So using, uh, using our... Uh, new dielectric material in a cylinder uh, that's uh, a metal foil rolled into a cylinder with a dielectric in between we can obtain microfarads using ceramic materials we can obtain picofarads to microfarads in electrolytic capacitors we have an electrolyte that acts as our dielectric uh, separating metallic foils uh, we have microfarads to millifarads range but it's unipolar behavior that that can only be charged to uh, in one direction and variable capacitors are available uh, where we can tune the capacitance of the material uh, to tune the resonance frequency for example in radio applications.